just showed you setting up the chains for stability, and I just used an example of a shoulder press. Now I'll show you how to set up the chains to accommodate the strength curve or work isometrics, whatever it is you decide you want to do. Just like when we set them up for the bench press or the squat, we use a smaller 3H chain. The most important thing though is on the shoulder press, you're going to need two 3H chains because the range of motion is so much higher from the top of the range of motion to the floor that you're going to need two 3H chains. Just like before, I've set it up so that I've measured this specifically for me, so nobody else should use this unless it's measured to them. Otherwise, the chain's going to deload on the floor before they get to the bottom of the movement, or no chain's going to deload at all because it's not set up to their specific limbs and their specific range of motion. So the setup for me, I'm going to go ahead and do a lift, show you guys all the chains. All the chains deloaded as I press throughout the lift. I pull the chain up off the floor. It's in deload. As I press through extension, I pull the weight off the floor. I had shoulders earlier today, so you can tell that lift was a little bit tough for me. Most important thing, you're going to need two 3 inch chains when you do a shoulder press. And the bottom chains, just like with the squat, sometimes rather than splitting them in half, I'll just use a whole five foot chain and connect it from the end. Because if you notice when I did that, only about two or three links stayed on the ground. And the most important thing is that all the weights deloaded at the bottom, but also that at the top of the lift, whether regardless of the lift, you should never ever take all the chain off the floor unless you're doing stability like I already showed you. Only about two or three links stayed on the ground, so I had a little sway effect when I did that, which is fine. Links still stayed on the ground, but normally sometimes, instead of splitting these in half, I'll lengthen them the whole way, just because I'm fortunate enough to have enough chain that I can use more chain that way, and it won't give me as bad as a stability effect. So that's setting up the chains for the shoulder press. All right, so I showed you guys bench press, squat, shoulder press, pretty much set them all up the same way. It's just adjusting the chain to fit the range of motion for the lift. In case you were confused about what I said when I make the chain longer on the squat, and I talked a little bit about it at the end of the shoulder press, if you look down here real quick, if you see where my foot is, if I had these set up, they're going to pull the same amount of weight off the floor if my foot's the floor. The only difference is that this is two chains hooked from the end, and this is one chain split in half. Short people can use these because we know that all the chain can't leave the floor, so this will keep all the chain from leaving the floor. Some taller guys will end up pulling this all the way off the floor, which defeats the purpose. So sometimes we have to use longer chain. Myself personally also, I've noticed that the more chain you leave on the floor, the less sway effect you're going to get. So you're going to accommodate the same amount of weight. One just has less sway effect than the other. The only difference is it's going to require a lot more chain to do this, this one. So you need to make sure that if you have enough chain, you can set them up that way. Now with the deadlift, I'm going to show you guys how to set them up with the deadlift. Since I'm not real tall, but I'm tall enough that if I were to deadlift this setup, then what would happen is I would end up pulling it off the floor and I would decelerate and I would no longer come in. I have chain mates on here. Normally you can also just hook it over the bar. Since I have these chain mates, I'm just going to use them. Also, when you get really strong and you, like we have 100 pound plates here at my gym, let's say we have a guy that has 100 pound plates all the way out to the edge. There's no room to put the chains, so these chain mates come in handy for guys that are deadlifting, you know, 600 pounds plus. So all I'm doing is taking it all the way, just looping it over. So I would set up in my deadlift position.
Hero style, all you have to do is take the chain, throw it right, and then throw the chain over the center of the bar here, grab outside the chain, and you can still deadlift here. Some guys like the chain in the dead center on sumos versus out on the ends. That's all I'm going to do for video two. Video three, I'll be showing you guys all kinds of neat ways to use chains for accessory lifts like elbow extensions and other creative exercise. Just to recap, we never want to set the chain up so that we have a heavy chain from the floor to the bar. Every person needs to have the chain adjusted specifically to their body for every single exercise so that the chain deloads at the bottom of the range of motion and not any sooner, and it needs to all be deloaded. When they complete the lift, you need to make sure that no weight ever comes up off the floor. The more chain you leave on the floor, the less sway effect you're going to get, and all it is is just a matter of setting it up for each specific lift. If we're trying to build acceleration or strength or overspeed eccentrics, you need to be doing the lift as fast as possible eccentrically, unless you're using it for isometrics or bodybuilding purposes to create longer time under muscle tension. In the case of injury, you're just going to do the speed to work around your specific injury. And that's all I have for you guys for video two.